everyone. If it looks like I'm sitting in my van, it's because I am. I decided to bring uh, Mitchell and Brody to the church parking lot to play because uh, there are very few places where we can play safely. And so I decided to do my Sunday school video from the van from the church parking lot. We wish we could be playing with all of you guys and soon we all will be. But let's get to our lesson for today. So we've spent the last few weeks talking about how Jesus power pulls us through all kinds of situations. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about a super awesome thing you might not realize about Jesus' power, that Jesus' power actually lives in us. Let me say it again because it's really cool. Jesus' power lives in us. Jesus' power wasn't just something that happened in the Bible. Jesus continues to show power in our world today, and one way he does that is by working through us. And it's pretty cool to think about, but sometimes we don't always feel very powerful. In fact, sometimes when we're going through tough seasons like this one, it might feel a little powerless. So take a minute to talk to your family about a time where you're feeling kind of powerless. I will tell you, for me, it's kind of worrying about next year and what the school year is going to look like. I don't really know what it's going to be like for my kids to go back to school and for me to go back to work. And that makes me feel a little powerless. So why don't you go ahead and share a similar example with your family. Hmm, so sometimes if we feel powerless, how do we know that Jesus' power lives in us? Well, it start, started not long after Jesus died, came back to life, and went to heaven. Let's find out what happened. If you want to follow along, we are in Acts 2, 1 through 12, but I'm going to summarize here. All the people who loved Jesus were meeting together, and they didn't even have to social distance. Um, all of a sudden, there was the sound of a mighty windstorm. And what looked like tongues of fire settled on their heads. Okay, so, so far, this might sound kind of cool. I think it maybe would maybe be a little scary for me. But um, it doesn't show how the people had Jesus' power living in them. But what happened next sure does. People from all different countries heard loud noises and came running to see what was going on. Christians started speaking languages they didn't even know. So that all the people gathering around could hear that Jesus loved them. Wow, I don't know about you, but if I could start speaking a second language that I don't even know, that would be cool. That has to be Jesus, an example of Jesus' power coming out in the Bible. When that wind and fire came, it was the Holy Spirit coming to live in Jesus' followers. The Holy Spirit brought Jesus' power to his people and to us. So let's practice saying Jesus loves you in different languages. We'll say each one several times. Jesús te ama. Jesús te ama. Jesús te ama. Jesús te ama. Jesús anacupenda. Jesús anacupenda. Jesús anacupenda. Jesús anacupenda. Yesua Isa jeter hesdika. Isa jeter hesdika. Isus lubit tibia. Isus lubit tibia. Isus lubit tibia. Isus lubit tibia. So cool, isn't it? 
Did you learn a language you'd never spoken before? I know I did. Now, before we go on, I've got a question for you. When the first Christians had Jesus' power living in them, they had the power to speak languages they didn't know. So here's my question. What's something you wish Jesus would give you the power to do? Pause and talk about that with your family. It's fun to think about all of the thing, cool things we could do with Jesus' power. But you know what's the coolest thing about Jesus' power? Is it helps us share about Jesus with everyone in the world. God didn't give the first Christians the power to fly or become invisible. He gave the power to tell everyone about Jesus no matter where they were from. I think that's pretty cool because the message of Jesus' love is for everyone. And right now the whole world is going through the coronavirus together. A lot of people might be looking for answers, looking for Jesus. Now, maybe you've been stuck in your house for a while now. With everything closed, it might not feel like you're out in the world. Maybe you're a little bored and wishing you had some interesting things to do. Here's good news. Jesus' power lives in us. So there's plenty to do. We can be the love of Jesus in other people's lives. Jesus' power gives us the ability to do important missions for Jesus. Earlier, we talked about ways we feel powerless, but God has given us plenty of powerful things to do, and we could start in our own family. So think about this. How can you show Jesus' love to your family? You and your family probably have spent a lot of time together lately. Loving each other well might not be something you can do in your own power, but Jesus' power lives in us. Just as he helped the first Christians share his love with people who spoke other languages, he can help you share his love with your family even when you feel bored, frustrated, or annoyed with them. This has been such a great reminder that even though we're cooped up in our homes, God is taking care of us and people all around the world going through the same thing. So I've got a special prayer challenge for you this week that will take you out of your house, even out of your country. Well, not literally, but you're going to pray for another country. Think of a place you know besides the one where you live. It's okay if you don't know whether it's a city, state, or country. Just say the name of the place. Go, got one in mind? Let's all shout out our places together on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Wow, that was so loud. I don't think I could hear all of you. <laughs> the people in all the places we just shout out need to know God is taking care of them, just like God is taking care of us. So I'm going to start a prayer. When I pause, say the name of the place you named again. God, please help the people in to know that you love them. Please take care of the people there. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for praying with me. And we hope you have a wonderful week this week. And again, think about how Jesus' power lives in you and how you can show that to your family, your friends, your neighbors, and the other people in your town. Have a great week, everyone. We love and miss you all. Thanks for watching.